Welcome to your Victorious course. Today we're going to be unboxing the Jet E20 in red. To do this, you're going to need a pair of scissors and a pair of snips. And what we're going to start with is just cutting the straps off the top. So cut these to open the box. Next, we'll just pull the box open. You'll notice there's some metal studs on one side for that section. Inside the box, you'll find you have some loose articles. We're going to want to take these out first. Just put the packaging to the side. So first, you'll see you've got a basket in here using your snips or your scissors. It's connected with cable ties. Disconnect this from the sections of the bike. Another loose article is the wheel, so just here, I'm going to want to snip that loose. If you find that it's close to the wheel, just pull the cable tie and it will give you a little bit of space to be able to get your scissors in. you've got the bike in the box and you're going to need somebody to help you lift it out to look after your body and your back so with a friend you'll get them to come and help you lift it best idea is one person at the front one person at the back you'll find you have forks at the front of the bike somebody could hold on to those and on the back of the bike you can get hold of the rear axle and then lift it up go to the side when popping it on the ground, if you've got an unstable base, just use some of the packaging and put the forks on there. That'll just look after your forks. Put your seat post with all the other loose accessories. In this instance, I'm going to put it on the box to build it so that you can see what I'm doing. So re-close the box in reverse with the longest panel on the top. Then, you can begin to lift it. Yeah. Lift him up and on. So this next stage is going to be taking off all of the lovely packaging that we've put around it. So using your snips or your scissors, just go along and disconnect all of the cable ties and remove all the packaging. So we've unpackaged the bike and we're now going to move on to the hardware box. So don't need the instructions. We're going to be looking for the toolkit. Once you've got your toolkit, open them up. The two tools that we're going to be using to pop the handlebars on are the green T Allen key and you're looking for a right angled Allen key as well. This is a number six. So once you've got your five on your six, we can move on to putting handlebars on. Coming around to the handlebars, what we have is a protective cap on the bottom. Give that a twist, pop him in the bin. Now what you're going to need to do is loosen this clamp here. And to do that, you're going to need the number five. And so holding it in your left hand, push the little arrow down and lift the clamp. With the number five, place it into this fitting here and you're going to twist to the left. What that does is it loosens this fixture here. So with that loose, we can then place it into the stem. If this doesn't fit straight away, if it's a bit tight, don't worry. What that just means is you're going to need to loosen it. So to do that, if you watch as I rotate here, a gap appears, a little tunnel that will lead down to the number six. So at the moment, there you go. You can probably see down there, there's the number six fitting. So if it's not fitting in, pop your number six in. If it rattles around, it's not seated. What you want to do is move it until it's nice and sturdy. Twist to the left to loosen it off and that will help you drop it in. But once you're in, find the height that you want. Make sure that it's lined up with the basket mount and then twist to the right. You'll start to feel some traction, you can probably see there. And you want to do this so it's hand tight. This can be adjusted later, don't worry. So once that's in place, excellent. Take your number six out. Grab your number five. 
Using your hands, kind of like you're cupping a baby's head, pop it underneath and just hold it where you would like that pivot to be. And again, we're gonna to twist to the right to just put some traction on that plan. As you twist to the right, you might see this rise up. Now you don't want to over tighten here because what can happen is you can snap this bolt. So do a couple of twists, try the clamp. That feels too loose. You see how there's hardly any pull there. So give it another go, another couple of twists. There we go. Before you put the clamp down, make sure that these striations here on the handlebar, you see how they're out to the right? These need to be inside the front. So you can come to the front of the bike to do this. Give them a little bit of a wiggle. And now you can see if you come to the front of the bike and you look directly across, there's no stripes either side. Lift your handlebars up, put the clamp down. And we're just going to keep them like that for now. That's the handlebars in, just turn the screen round. So handlebars are in. Next step is we're going to be putting the front wheel on. So grab your front wheel, remove the fender and pop it somewhere safe. And the tools that we're going to be using for this section. So inside your toolkit, find the two spanners. We're going to be using the 15 and the 19. So grab your 15. We're going to remove the safety bar, which is inside the fork. So on this, we're just going to loosen these bolts and nuts. Once that might take a little bit of wiggling, I make it look easy. Lift the forks up. If it doesn't come out, there we go. You don't need this. Pop it in the bin. And so the next step is putting the wheel on. Now, one thing I have to explain, and you'll notice about the wheels, are these particular washers here. So loosen off the end nuts. Now, the washers in the middle have a little stick out. You see here? Now, this is so that the wheel fits onto the forks in a particular way. Now, if we take a look at the forks, you'll notice it's rounded at the top and there's a gap at the bottom. So what we need to do is put this rounded element on the top of the bolt here. This might make it a little bit easier to see. So you see how it's flat on either side here and it's rounded at the top. The fork needs to fit on like this. So this may take a little bit of wiggling and you might not do it straight away, but trust me, it will go on. So making sure you have more than enough space either side. You have a motor cable coming out of one side and a disc brake on the other. So that tells you which way the wheel needs to go into the forks, this way. So you have a caliper on the right hand side of you, if you're facing the bike and the motor cable needs to be on the left. So with the rounded section at the top in orientation of where the forks are, Lift them up with your left hand. You can always get somebody to hold the bike for you if you want. And what we're going to do is we're just going to slip those over the top there. Now, if you look underneath, if I move this back, you'll notice that little cutout is underneath here. And that's where we need it to be, just in there. So once it's on, make sure you don't get anything caught. We'll move that cable out of the way. Hand tighten these until they're nice and firm. Once they're nice and firm, Grab your 19, it'll say 19 on the top of the spanner. And so on the right hand side, we're going to be twisting to the back. And you want these as tight as you can possibly get them, because this is what's going to make sure that motorized wheel isn't nice and in situ. On the left hand side, it's going to be the opposite. You're going to be twisting it towards you to turn it up. So give it a good, good few turns. If you don't think you're strong enough to tighten it, get somebody to come and tighten it for you. Push it down. Grab your motor cable. What you'll notice is there's a white arrow here and there's a white arrow here. What you need to do is line those up. These two are friends. And like everybody after COVID, we'll be with each other again. There we go. Pop that in. Once he's nice and secure, your wheel's on. Just lift it up. Give it a little bit of a turn. That moves nice and freely. And your front wheel is on. Next step is the fender, so grab your front fender, remove it from the packaging. You're going to need the number 5 T Allen key and you're also going to be fitting your front light as well. So one thing to make note of is there's a cable coming into the front light here. Just push that in, make sure that's nice and snug and tight and then take the light out of the casing. A trick that I'll give you, turn the wheel and that'll make it a lot easier to get to this bolt here. So with your 5, pop it in. Take that off, put your hand underneath because it will run away. Once it's caught, pop it somewhere safe. Now, the way we're going to do this is we're going to sandwich the fitting for the light in between here. 
and it can get a little bit fiddly holding parts. So looking at the front wheel of the bike, we've got the light cable wants to be at the front. You're going to place your fender through and when your fender's inside, so just underneath the forks, pop the light in there and you're going to hold this in place with one hand. When it's in place, grab your bolt and you can feed it through. So you're going to go through the fender, through the light, through the second part of the fender, and then just have a little bit of a move around until you find that hole. So, ready go. There it is. So, give a little bit of a hand twist. Just by doing that, it just keeps it in place. So you can see you've got fork, the front part of the fender, the light, the second part of the fender. And you're just going to start twisting to the right. Don't worry about the light being a bit wonky at the moment. You also want to make sure you push the fender up when you put it in, because otherwise what's going to happen is it's going to get caught on the wheel. So you see how it's quite low? So just lift it up. And what that'll do is it'll give you some clearance on the wheel. Tighten it with the number five. You want to tighten this so it's, you know, hand tight. There we go. The advantage with the front light is it does pivot here. So you can always lift that up wherever you'd like it, whether you want it pointing to the ground or where you're heading. We'll cable tie this a little bit later. And that is your front fender on. So we're going to connect the LCD screen. What you'll notice is you have two cables with green ends. So looking carefully, you'll notice that there's little holes and little pins and these little cutouts. What you want to do is line these up so that you can push them together. Now it may take a little bit of force, but once you've got them lined up, they're nice and snug. Find your scissors or your snips. You'll notice that there's a set of keys on the front. Cut those loose. Pop them in the battery just so you know where they are. I've just placed them in for now. We'll tidy up these cables when we come to the end of the build. But that is your battery and LCD. So we're going to put, put in the pedals and the seat post on. You're going to need the number 15 spanner from your toolkit and your pedals you'll find in the hardware box. So when it comes to putting the pedals on, what you need to do is look on the very end and you'll see it says... WL or WR. R is for the right hand side of the bike. So what that means is when you're on the bike facing forwards, that's your right hand side and your left hand side is this side. So to pop him in, put the thread in and you need to rotate towards the front. Now, once you've got a bit of traction, you can just keep twisting or you can get your number 15, pop him on and then you'll just spin it to the front. Now, when it's tight, give it a good old twist, and that's your pedal on. Do the same for the right-hand side. When it comes to putting the seat post on, hold the circle and twist it to the front of the bike to loosen the clamp. So the front of the bike to loosen, put the seat post. Again, I've already greased in here. Pop the seat post in. Now, if it's too loose, hold the wheel and twist towards the back of the bike. And what that'll do is it'll give you some tension. What you want is you want to have a little bit of an imprint in your hand when you close this, so that's too loose. There we go. And that's the pedals and the seat post. So the next stage is we're going to pop the rear fenders on. These will have been attached to the rear tyres, so you're going to need to snip them loose. And you'll see I've already popped the right hand one on and the left one is here. What I do in advance is I would find the tools that you need. So you're going to need your number four Allen key and I'm using my own adjustable spanner. I find this to be a bit easier. And prior to putting the fenders on, you're going to want to take out all of these bolts and nuts and put them aside. What you'll find is you'll have your bolt with a washer and then for the back end, you've got a washer and a nut. You wanna make sure that the fender arms are on the outside of the rear axle. Get your bolt, feed it through the fender and you'll see that it comes through the other side. Then grab in your washer and bolt. This can be fiddly, as with any small bolts. Pop the washer on first, so it's nice and snug. Get your bolt. You're gonna wanna twist that on, twisting towards the front of the bike to tighten it. Get it as much as you can. Your number four, feed it through the spokes and you'll notice that it lines up here. And then with your adjustable, Tighten it on the back of the bolt and you're going to want to twist your Allen key towards you. And what this does, it'll tighten the fender arm onto the axle. 
there we go now once that's nice and secure give it one more little twist Keep hold of your four and this is a good chance to just take off these rear basket bolts. So just put it in, twist. And then once you've removed all these, pop them safely underneath the axle. There we go. They're quite long because this is what's going to keep the rear basket mounted. Pop them underneath and it means we're ready to go to put the rear basket on. Popping the rear basket on, you're going to want to disconnect the cable ties that hold the front basket in, so give them a snip. And then placing the rear basket on the back axle, you'll notice that if you line up the holes with the bolt entries, grab the bolts that you took out a moment ago, hand tighten it in. They'll go quite far to be honest, just by twisting, so you'll save a lot of time. And then just give them the last few turns with the number four. If you have them slightly loose, you can move it side to side just to see that it's nice and central. But pop the other three in, give it a tighten, and that is your rear basket on. So we're going to be putting the bottom bracket on for the basket. What we need to do is you're going to need the green T Allen key, and you're going to need the number 10 spanner. First things first, use the Allen key to remove these bolts here. I've already taken one out, and there's one that I've left in the fork. It has two washers here, so if it does fly off, just remember to look for those two washers. Give it a couple of twists. He will come loose. Pop him somewhere safe. And then when it comes to the top ones, we're gonna remove these bolts as well. So this is where you need your 10 on the spanner. Place it behind the bolt. Get your Allen key up top. Twist to the left, it'll loosen it off. And same applies. Pop it somewhere safe, and what that'll do is it'll allow you to pop that on at a later time. So, putting the bracket on, find the bolt that has the two washers. You'll notice that the washer is made up of a spring washer and a regular washer. The spring washer has a cutout in it, so this needs to be the next in line after the bolt. So, with your basket bracket and the bolt you're going to do a hand tightening to begin with what this means is it just secures it nicely so bracket in this position fangs pointing down hold it in place line it up and just do a little bit of a hand tighten there there you go find the other side so again bolt spring washer regular washer if you have them all in one pile and you're slightly confused the basket bolts are the shorter ones. This is the one for the basket. There we go. So, pop him in. Hand tighten to begin with. This is just so they don't all disappear in one direction. There we go. Once it's in place, grab your number five. Now you want to do this nice and tight. So, a good couple of twists. There you go. Same on the other side. And once this is nice and secure, we can move on to moving and placing the basket on the bracket. So putting the front basket on, the tools you're going to need are your number five Allen key, your number four Allen key, the number 10 spanner, and I'm using my own personal adjustable for this. So you'll notice with the fittings, we took these two bolts out already, and underneath where we've placed the bracket on, you'll notice a groove in the bottom of this bracket attachment. You want the bottom bracket to fit under that groove. So I've used the four and the adjustable here, and I've used the five and the 10 on the top. So to tighten the bottom, what you'll do, pop the four in the top, put your adjustable or like underneath, tighten that up, give it a good twist so it's nice and tight. If it looks like it's off center, Loosen the top two, loosen the bottom, and you can push it a little bit side to side just to get it central on this bar. And when it comes to tightening the ones at the top, get your 10, place it in behind, and you'll see here, and then pop your five in the front and give it a good couple of twists to the right. And that's going to tighten up the basket. We mentioned earlier when we fitted the front light that the cable we could give it a little bit of a tidy up. If you come around to the side, you see we have these tidy coils here. In the middle, there's a smaller one. I've taken that off. You just loosen it off, as you can see here. 
you peel it off, folded the cable over and secured it nice and tidily in there. So that is the front basket. So here we have the finished article for Jet E20 in red and we're going to do a quick demo to get you on the road quickly. First things first, come to the battery, open up the silicone panel and you want to make sure that the battery is turned on. So that's making sure that the line is down. Close that panel, come to the handlebars, hold the power button down for three seconds, screen will come on and then you're going to turn the lights on by holding the plus button for three seconds. Screen will turn on, front light will come on, rear light will be on as well. Now to turn the lights off, you hold the plus button again for three seconds. We want to check the throttle quickly, so just make sure that your feet are away from the rear wheels, otherwise you'll get run over. And just press that throttle down, the throttle works, which is great. I've pumped the tyres up, the tyres, I've just used a track pump, and you can go between 40 and 65 psi, it is your preference what you would like to go to. When it comes to the hardware box, inside here you will find your charger for when you need to charge the bike. If you have any other queries, look at our other YouTube videos on our Yorvik tricycles.